Around the 21st century in Seoul, an enormous building appears out of nowhere and causes the first major disaster to occur. Strange gates began to open and monsters came out of them. Due to those gates, the whole world fell into chaos. Not long after that, awakened people who could hunt monsters called hunters began to appear. People starting to get peace because the hunter association and guild system have been put in place. But that peace didn't last long, because a second great disaster occurred. The great war between the divine world of Elysium and the demon world of Pandemonium has started. Daimos, the demon lord of the demon world. Pandemonium led the army of darkness to invade the earth. Following this move, an angel from Elysium also appeared to fight the demons, and slowly the world starts to turn into hell. However, the one who stopped this war was neither an angel nor a demon, but the savior of mankind, the hero. With the appearance of a hero who possessed extraordinary power compared to the other awakened, the demon lord was finally defeated, and the war came to an end. The world entered a stage of peace and thirty years finally passed. In a Seoul National Art Museum, a large statue of a hero stands in the center of the museum. There are a lot of people gathered here because I heard that today is that day. I, who is currently looking at my cell phone, can only sigh. Group assignments are currently very boring. I'm a Korean university student majoring in Korean language and literature named Jean Minchul. I'm sure it's only the professor who doesn't realize how pointless this group assignment is. I even have to do this on my day off. In front of me, who was very irritated, some children were excitedly following their teacher. I'm not sure why it's so crowded in here, but field trips are going on right now. Even today, this place is still a popular destination. I've been to this place too many times to get bored. Many of the children who work in tourism have dreams of becoming like the heroes who have saved this world. Twenty years ago, my class and I also went on a field trip to this place. My classmates who saw the huge statue of the hero were amazed. My innocent friend asked how could someone be that tall. He was sure that the hero must be a giant. Hearing what my friend said, I destroyed his innocent dream by saying that it was impossible. Our class teacher called everyone's attention and explained the story of the hero. Our teacher then told us, that the hero is really strong even among hunters. He uses his powers to travel the world to protect people. Because of that, if it wasn't for the hero, the war might still have continued until now. Although it's a shame that the hero died after defeating the demon king in the second great calamity, this statue was made so that we can remember the hero's sacrifice. Because of that, our class teacher said that we should always be grateful for the hero's sacrifice. Even I, who at that time was also impressed with the hero and wanted to become strong like him. When I heard the questions of my class students, I was interested. They asked various questions such as whether they could become hunters as long as they tried, or how did they become hunters. Our class teacher felt overwhelmed by the questions showered by her students. At that time, our teacher hesitated to answer. But back then, I didn't know why. Becoming an official hunter is difficult because you need both luck and talent. We were too young then. The teacher told us that there was no realistic way for us to become hunters. It came true, which was a bit of a shock to my childhood wish. After looking at the time on my phone, it should be time to gather now. While I was checking my phone, finally someone's voice called my name. My juniors finally arrived on time. I almost deleted their names from the list. While waiting in line, they gossiped about how I had become the strictest person in this course. Hearing them talking about me right behind their backs, I admonished them that I could hear everything and told them to control themselves. After all, maybe it was because of the hero's sword show, but it sure was bustling here even though it wasn't a holiday. While waiting in line, I saw the hero's painting. It has been a long time since the hero's death occurred. To save the world that became a battlefield due to the demon king's attack and the fall of the celestial world, the hero burned his life to plunge his sword into the demon king's heart. And now was the first day that the sword that pierced the demon king's heart, the holy sword of Kalit, would be shown to the public. After waiting in line for a long time, we were finally invited to enter. 
With this, I believe we have sufficient material for a report. After entering the exhibition hall with my excited juniors, we finally arrived at our destination. Looking at the Kalit Holy Sword that was showcased, I wasn't sure if I should say that the hero's sword was extraordinary or not, for that sword only shined more brightly than any other sword. As I was looking at the sword, I saw the sword floating. At first I thought that I was just looking wrong, but right now, the Holy Sword is floating in front of me. I thought that this was just a special event performance, but suddenly the Holy Sword pierced my stomach. I don't understand why I was stabbed by a sword, and who is this person in front of me? I then realized that I was the hero who stabbed me. When I was stabbed, the mouth praised the hero. I was shocked and did not understand why my mouth was talking to itself. My mouth then introduced himself as Campion Deimos and said that he didn't expect to meet such a great warrior in a remote dimension like this. He also said that the hero's ability deserved praise, and he wanted to hear the hero's name. Following this conversation, I started to think that maybe I'm Champion Deimos. The hero who refused to speak thrust his sword deeper. Since the hero refuses to talk, Deimos then warns the hero not to let his guard down as he intends to meet again. After that, Deimos laughed out loud. While all this was going on, my head hurt so much that it felt like it would burst. Because of all this pain, I can only scream in pain. But suddenly I was awakened by the voices of my juniors who were worried. When I woke up, I saw my juniors who had gathered worried about me. I don't understand what just happened. The worried juniors asked if I was okay because I suddenly fainted. Hearing their questions made me feel confused. I asked if the holy sword flew and stabbed me. Those who didn't understand what I was talking about replied that I suddenly fainted after several minutes of staring at the holy sword. I wonder if what happened just now was just a hallucination. I'm pretty sure it didn't feel like a hallucination. The moment I looked at the holy sword, Kalit, I remembered everything. The demon lord who invaded the earth to bring destruction upon the world 23 years ago, one of the four-dimensional lords who hold control over pandemonium, is the war demon king, Champion Demos. And that was me in my previous life. Class finally ended, and my juniors complimented me that I did a good job. They didn't expect that they would get an A-plus from that cranky professor. With my very tired face and voice, I said that they also did a good job. My worried junior asked if I was okay since I'd been like this since we came back from the museum. They advised me to at least go to the hospital, but I refused and said I was just having a lot on my mind. Since there was nothing else for me to do here, I took my leave. But one of my classmates who noticed that I wanted to go asked if I wasn't attending the end-of-term party. After being rejected for a drink, the classmate wondered if something had happened to me. End-of-term party or whatever, I still have a lot to think about. I should be just an ordinary person, but I'm the reincarnation of the demon king Deimos. During Deimos' attack on Earth, many humans were injured and killed. I've cursed Deimos as the evil bastard my whole life, but who would have thought that the evil bastard was me? When I was small, I told my teacher that when I grow up, I will become a hero who defeats the evil demon king. How funny it was when I realized those words had come from the former demon lord's mouth. After thinking about my current state, I couldn't help but sigh. I can't return to being a demon lord, nor can I pass my skills to Jean Minchul. Besides, I don't understand why I got my memory back anyway. Another question I was thinking about was why did I, the demon king, die in the first place? My body, which was stabbed to death at that time, was just a clone. My soul should have returned to my original body. Moreover, it is said that the hero died with me 23 years ago, even though at that time he was still in good health. In the end, it was useless to think about all this. Thinking about something I can't figure out is just a waste of time. I'd better think about what I can do now. In terms of mana, there was already a huge difference between Deimos and John Minchul. Devils from higher dimensions could sense mana easily, but it was rare for humans from lower dimensions to feel mana. I still remember how to do it. All I have to do is take a deep breath and focus my mind. After doing that, a message window popped up saying that I had sensed mana, therefore I met the conditions. Seeing the message, I feel happy. I thought that now all I need to do is slowly learn how to use mana, 
but another message window appears saying that the awakening is about to begin. After the awakening was finished, finally the message said that trait player had been given to the awakener Jean Minchel. I was shocked by what just happened. I didn't expect that I would experience awakening this easily. To rest, I sat down on a park bench and went back to thinking. I've been confused with my self-righteousness as a demon lord in my previous life. I wasn't sure if I should feel happy or not for experiencing the awakened. While I was thinking, a message window popped up saying that I can already use the status window. The status window is a unique ability gifted to me and to use it I need to say status window to check my current trait. After seeing the message, I decided to check my status window. After saying the status window, my information appeared in front of me. The information shows that I have the skill Eyes of Truth, which can check target information, and I have the trait Player, which says that I can reform my laws by gaining points from killing monsters. Seeing that, I felt a bit confused about my Player trait. My way of getting stronger by hunting is really like a game. As I was thinking, I suddenly realized something. The upper and lower class dimensions are separated by a weight called karma. People from the upper class dimension who had stronger karma ended up with more power than those in the lower class dimension. This was the limit of their strength due to being born into beings from a lower class dimension with a different starting line. Because of that, beings from the upper class dimension had to use cone to traverse to the lower class dimension, and a power known as restraint would be applied to maintain the balance of power. Because of that, even the demon Lord Deimos had to use a clone to cross dimensions. But if there is a power that can revise the law, that would mean that I have already exceeded my limits. Just thinking about it makes me excited. There's nothing I can do for humans as Jean Minchul rather than as a demon lord. Everything was over, including the compensation after the truce between Pandemonium and Elysium. If the humans living in the present had gotten past their pain after the hero's sacrifice to find out the demon king had resurrected, they would have fallen into even greater chaos. And in the end, I also have to live life as a human named Jean Minchul. Since it's like this, I might as well make use of the information from my previous life to become stronger and make a contribution to mankind. That compensation should have been enough. What's more, my goals in my previous life also became stronger, so I was able to achieve both of them at the same time. I feel that is a great idea. Fair is still fair. After deciding on my goal, I thought about what I should do about my magic power. With Deimos's memory, there are many ways to increase my magic power. That's why I decided to study that. In the middle of the mountain, just a minute before midnight, I finally completed the Great Magic Focus Array. The Great Magic Focus Array was magically passed down from the War Demon Lords. This array could artificially gather nearby mana. Due to the lack of activating material, it still can't be activated like this. However, the moment I placed an intermediate, the array started to glow brightly. What I placed in the center of the array was an E-rank mana stone that I used as the activation material of the Great Magic Focus Array. Having found the energy source, the Great Magic Focus Array activates and will strengthen mana by 450% for 5 minutes. Not to waste time, I meditated in the middle of the array. I can feel mana. It's so dense that it can be seen by the eye. This is the perfect environment to gain Kai. Inhale natural mana with the breath and collect it in the body. This is generally known as the foundation of key art. However, what I'll get is a breathing technique that creates a small universe within the mind by accumulating star energy. When I was still the demon lord Deimos, I visited the Murim dimension through my contract with the heavenly demon. What I studied there were ancient martial arts something more difficult to master than the divine heavenly demon art that only the leader of the demonic cult called the Cosmic Genesis art could learn. During my stay there, I collected various kinds of martial arts to study, and as a result, I managed to develop them into techniques that were even more powerful than the fighting techniques used by demons. The reason I was able to reach the devil's supreme heights was thanks to this martial art. Therefore, there is only one choice I will take. I will merge the streams of stars. While meditating, I felt a very strong pressure. The star power will destroy my body the moment I let my guard down. 
I was then surprised to see a world that looked different. If I stopped now, my fate would only be to die or go insane. An incredible amount of energy, too great for a single life to take in. But to me, who used to be a demon lord, this pain is trivial. The duration for the great magic focus array has finally expired. The cosmic genesis art skill was finally acquired, and the cosmic genesis art reached one star. Because of that, my body was strengthened thanks to the effects of the cosmic genesis art. Strength, agility, tenacity, vitality, and magic power increased by five. The cosmic genesis art was a mana-breathing technique that created a small universe within the mind known as the Dantian world. With that art, I can absorb the waves emitted by the light nebula and dark nebula into the Dantian world to use as I wish. After meditating, I felt that my body was all sticky. I wonder if my other techniques are also included as skills. While checking my status window, a message popped up saying the light nebula and dark nebula's powers had merged. Due to the creation of a new power from the union of two opposing forces, magic power has now turned into chaos power and mana has turned into chaos energy. Seeing the message, I was shocked and confused. After finishing my business, I, who have now returned to my bedroom, checked my status window again. Chaos power and chaos energy. I have never heard of both of them. So the cosmic genesis art uses the power of darkness and light. I wonder if I just absorb Dark Nebula's power because I used to be a devil. If I can fully utilize the Cosmic Genesis art and absorb the power of the Light Nebula and Dark Nebula, I can become the strongest in this dimension. The next day, to work as an Awakener, I went to register first with the Hunter Association. This is a place where I can see the happiness of those who succeeded in Awakening and those who rejected their results. And for me, the results are finally out. Seeing the results of this test is truly tragic. I asked the appraiser who gave me my test result if there was an F grade, and he replied that the lowest grade was E. The Hunter Association assessor looked embarrassed. Looks like he saw my test results. The association couldn't detect chaos power because all that was listed was magic power. Out of curiosity, I asked the appraiser what the bracket next to this stat was. He also replied that it was the potential of an awakener. He then explained that Awakeners develop by absorbing some of the magic power from the monsters they kill in towers and gates. Those brackets show the limits of their development. Hearing that I realized that ordinary hunters had growth limits. But that's not a problem for me. The appraiser then said that although this was a rare occurrence, there were hunters who obtained strength that surpassed the amount of potential that the Hunter Association could measure. If I register as a hunter... Even if it's not towers or gates, there are still many areas where I can use my abilities. Thus, the appraiser tried to cheer me up and said not to be too upset and do my best. Even though I wasn't disappointed at all, I thanked the appraiser. Having already received the Awakener test results from the Hunter Association, I left the Hunter Association building. As I exited the building, I saw a lively atmosphere outside the building. As I expected, the official guilds have already started trying to recruit new Awakeners to their guild. Many people advertise the benefits of joining their guild. When one of the guilds glanced at me, they immediately looked disinterested. It seems that news of me being level E has already spread. It was really fast, but not a problem for me because I hate troublesome things. All of my stats are level E except for magic power. While scratching my head, I thought that I seemed to be someone all the guilds didn't want. But just as I was thinking like that, a message came to my phone. When I checked the message, I also saw a notification from the Hunter Association. It seems there will be a licensing exam to determine whether or not I can do work inside the tower or gate. There are 10 days left until the Hunter License Exam takes place. Looks like I'll have to postpone my leveling up. Hunter License Exam. This exam will be chosen at random from five choices. And these exams had the same factors in assessing one's fighting and survival abilities. The current ME would definitely be a strong candidate for elimination. Because of that, I decided that I had to strengthen my body if I wanted to graduate. After training, my body was strengthened thanks to the effects of the cosmic genesis art. Tired and short of breath after running, I rested. The cosmic genesis art strengthens my body using only breathing techniques. 
However, perhaps I have battle experience from my previous life's memories. Passing the hunter license exam should be an easy matter as long as my body can withstand the training. During the day I work on my strength and push my limits, and at night I train the cosmic genesis art to refine it. Let alone ten days, I believe I only need one week to prepare for the hunter exam. After one week, I check the status window. Seeing the incredible number in my status window made me feel very happy. All my hard work in one week by forcing my body finally paid off. However, the achievement that deserves more attention is the result of the power that emerged from the clash between the Light Nebula and Dark Nebula, Chaos Key. In my previous life, where I only trained with Dark Nebula, it took me over a year to reach two stars. But now I achieved it in just one week. My body has also been properly trained. I can even learn the Seven Star Vagabond Fist and Flowing Cloud Steps. Seven Star Vagabond Fist is a fundamental martial art with seven stances that have been passed down from various nameless masters. This art strengthens body parts by expelling internal energy to learn martial arts. This martial art is easy to use with other martial arts, and the consistency in his movements that were close to instinct, so one could say this was the perfect martial art for me to learn. Because of that, I learned the Seven Star Vagabond Fist. I wondered what the martial art I learned was considered. This seemed to be considered a skill, just like the Cosmic Genesis art. Its level is much lower than the Cosmic Genesis art, but I'm already thankful that it includes basic martial arts. I also want to learn higher martial arts, but if I learn them without foundation, I'm afraid that my body won't be able to handle it. I wonder if I should learn flowing cloud steps first, since it's a basic movement technique. Those actual footsteps weren't flowing cloud steps but with my body's current state, they were the most suitable. Flowing cloud steps, as the name suggests, means walking on the clouds. This was not a movement technique to attack the enemy, but a martial art that had the great advantage of countering using basic stances. Out of curiosity, I tried using flowing cloud steps for practice. As an effect of flowing cloud steps, movement speed increases by 50% and consumes 2 chaos chi per second. When I used flowing cloud steps, I was surprised that it was so different from what I expected. This movement is too fast. I didn't expect that this was a one-star flowing cloud steps. With this speed, it should be at least four-star level. Then again, not only was the speed extraordinary, even when I did difficult moves, my posture wasn't messed up at all. I wonder if that means martial arts using Chaos Kai are better than using dark magic power. Looking at the tree in front of me, I thought maybe I should give it a try. I then hit him with my fist. Seeing the result of my punch, I was shocked. Not only did I destroy the tree, but I destroyed it. With just elementary martial arts, the result was like this. If I were to learn the advanced martial arts that I excelled at back then, I would definitely become much stronger than my previous life. But, looking at my hands covered in blood, I thought that maybe my body would be crushed first if I used them barehanded again. Therefore, there was no other choice but to use that. When I tried to enter the Interstellar Alliance's Yongsan branch building, my Awakener's license was being verified. After my Awakener license was verified, I was allowed to enter. After I entered, a staff member greeted me and offered to help me as long as I told my business. Looking at the staff, I thought that these people still like this kind of thing. The Interstellar Alliance is an alliance created by the cooperation of military and merchant races between dimensions. One of the three largest factions in the multiverse sells items and offers mercenary services without discrimination across dimensions or race. Their influence was truly enormous, even if there wasn't a race that didn't borrow their power. This organization was an organization that no one would dare to oppose. Simply put, they are dirty traders who make huge profits by exploiting neutral positions. I told the staff that I wanted to meet the branch manager. The staff, who was confused, asked me to repeat what I said. I then called Code R. That alone should be enough to summon the branch manager. The staff, who finally understood, asked me to wait a bit. A moment later, a dwarf was seen running in a hurry. The people who saw the dwarf running over realized that the dwarf was the manager of this branch, named Martin. Seeing this branch manager running in such a hurry, they couldn't help but wonder what kind of big man would make a representative of the Federation run when he was rarely out except for big business. 
Even the staff who was with me were shocked to see it. Upon approaching us, the branch manager, Martin, asked if I was a Code R customer. While wiping his sweat, he apologized for his impoliteness, as VIPs rarely visit remote branches like this. Knowing I wanted to use the dimensional storage, he offered to accompany me. After seeing Martin's information using Eyes of Truth, I became interested to see it. Even though his appearance was that of an old man who had lived a long time, he was still a young child in dwarven years. Has served as a branch manager which includes an important position. I'm sure he must be really great. While following him, I wonder if he's getting old miserably since all dwarves look the same to my eyes. After following Martin, we finally arrived at our destination, the dimensional storage. Trading between dimensions usually takes a lot of time and money. And dimensional storage is a technological breakthrough created by the Alliance which reduces the time for trading. I cursed them in their previous life for the fees they took to lend me the space. But I never thought it would be useful like this. Due to the high level of technology and the high cost, you are required to be verified as an Alliance leader or VIP. There are 24 VIPs who are known, but their identities are strictly confidential. That means they have no way of knowing my identity. After touching the dimensional storage door, a message popped up asking me to enter the Code R magic pattern. After using some chaos key and entering the magic pattern, the vault opened. Once the magic pattern is confirmed and the VIP is verified, I can access the dimensional storage. Inside the dimensional storage space, it looked like it was in space. From within my storage, there is only one item stored. I also asked the storage dimension to give it to me. If only I had known that I would be reincarnated, I would definitely have kept more things. But I should be grateful for at least keeping this, since I can't bring it down to Earth. After a while, the items I had stored were finally successfully transferred to the Earth. At first glance, this object is no different from an ordinary stone. But when I raised this stone, it turned into something like energy and wrapped around my hand like a bracelet. This thing is Dark Star. After realizing its new owner, Dark Star synchronized with its new user. After the synchronization was complete, Dark Star's information appeared. Dark Star is a multi purpose weapon created with the essence of a fading star. This artifact can recreate various mythic and legendary items. The user can change the shape of the weapon at will, and when the shape changes, the user's stats will be adjusted according to their trait. As expected, this artifact was sealed. Dark stars are artifacts that become strong or weak by following the user's karma. That's why I wonder what if I was the one using it now. Since my body is weaker than an adult devil, there's no way this has karma. The numbers couldn't possibly even bring out half of Dark Star's abilities. But that wasn't a problem thanks to Dark Star's basic functions. With the ability to transform into tens of thousands of different forms, as long as I have this, the Hunter exam will be easy. This is the greatest weapon for someone who studies various martial arts like me. After Jean Minchul left the building, Martin, who was watching John Minchul leaving the building through the camera, was surprised that the VIP code that had just arrived didn't look like an extraordinary human. Even though he had checked the confirmation code with his own eyes, there was still no error. Martin then asked what his secretary's opinion meant that a human from Earth, which was a lower class dimension, had a VIP code. Martin is sure that this means a high class being who doesn't want his identity to be exposed is hiding his power by coming to Earth using a clone. He felt that he could smell the jackpot from Jean Minchul. His secretary, who heard this, said that Martin was still a money freak. Martin also said that anyone is a customer as long as they can make money. Because of that, he asked his secretary to follow him immediately because his life would be easier if he had competent subordinates. The secretary then chuckled and asked to make sure that Martin wanted him to keep an eye on the situation and not investigate it for now. The secretary said that he would make sure this information wouldn't leak to the other branches. Martin, who was satisfied with his secretary's answer, said that he would entrust this matter to him. After his secretary left, Martin thought that Earth was a world that had received so much attention from the high-class races after the appearance of the tower. The position of manager of the branch adjacent to the tower was earned after much effort. 
but only that is still lacking. Because of that, Martin intended for those VIP customers to reach a higher position within the Alliance. After arriving at the place I was going, I was a little impressed that this place was really big. Today is the day of the hunter exam, and I have now arrived at the location of the hunter license exam. There were various people gathered here, such as examinees and merchants, selling their magic items. While checking my exam number, I remember that it was said that I should just wait in the waiting room during the day. As I was heading to the waiting room, I was almost run over by reporters. In the direction they were headed, many reporters were trying to interview the people they called Shin Yumi and Yu Seung Wu. It seems that there are artists who will take this hunter license exam. But since it has nothing to do with me, I don't care about it either. But other people who heard Shin Yumi's name asked if she wasn't the daughter of the Vanaheimer ambassador. His friend who heard that said that he had heard that Shin Yumi was a half-elf human. Not only that, he had also heard rumors that Shin Yumi could even use spirit magic. After talking about Shin Yumi, they then talked about Yu Seung Wu, who was apparently recruited by the Huarang Guild after the ability test. Since the Huarang Guild was the number one guild in the country, they were curious what Yu Xiong Wu's starting stats were like. They were sure that one of them would get first place in this license exam. As the exam time approached, an announcement appeared saying that the 55th Hunter license exam would start in 10 minutes. Each registrant will receive a Hunter watch, and when all participants have received it, they ask all participants to go to the gate that has been marked on the watch. After arriving at the exam venue, I felt that this place wasn't natural terrain. I wonder if this is an artificial gate. The other entrants who were with me felt the heat and wondered what the examiners could expect with the examinees taking the exam in this kind of environment. After all the participants had gathered in their respective places, an announcement appeared saying that the theme of the 55th Hunter license exam would be announced now. The theme this time is survival. The participants will pass as long as they collect 100 points before the exam ends. For further details, listed on the watches of the participants. To gain points, defeating normal monsters will earn 1 point. Defeating named monsters will receive 10 points. Defeating boss monsters will receive 100 points. And defeating other candidates will receive half of their points. In addition, surviving until the end of the exam will earn 50 points. Each registrar will start with the same amount of shield energy, and it will decrease with each attack. Registrants who run out of shield energy will automatically fail and will be moved directly outside the test location. Hearing that explanation, I thought that this exam was quite intelligent. The announcement further explains that there are three ways to pass the test, namely hunting 50 normal monsters, participating in raid bosses marked on the map, or defeating other candidates. This meant that opponents that could be fought were everywhere. This exam really excited me. Basically, to earn points, participants must compete due to the limited number of monsters. Someone will be sure to lack points. Because the system is like this, the participants are forced to attack other participants. This exam blatantly set up a situation that made everyone fight each other. Even if there were people who suggested teaming up, I thought that it was troublesome to move around in a group and also didn't suit my style. Besides, what I'm after are boss monsters. After exploring this forest, I wonder if no one is fighting because I think watching fights is the most fun. But just as I was thinking that, I heard the sound of a steel crash from a distance. I thought that this was a chance to see what the other participants were capable of, but I really couldn't miss a good fight. When I headed towards the source of the sound I heard, I encountered a monster in the form of a panther. I guess I should start with this one and change my plans. To fight, I also changed Darkstar into a spear and enveloped my body with aura. Due to chaos flowing through my entire body, all stats other than chaos power increased by 40%. I then used flowing cloud steps and shortened my distance from the monster. The monster that saw me approaching started to roar. Even though it was an illusory monster created for a test, its killing intent and overwhelming power felt real. Its skin is thick and its strength is great. Taking his attacks with a body like this wouldn't end well. Seeing that the monster was charging towards me, I dodged and attacked the monster's back. The stricken monster then reacted and attacked me using its spiked ball-like tail. 
I who noticed the tail attack also dodged the attack. It feels a bit difficult to use melee weapons because of the tail. Because of that, I had to change my plans. I also waited for the monster to make a move. When the monster lunges, now is the time. I aimed my spear and used eight Chaos Kai to use the Demonic Spearmanship Breakthrough UA Clan Spear Art. Demonic Spearmanship is a demonic swordsmanship that only focuses on killing the target's life. This spear technique was specialized in destroying the target as fast as possible. With this technique, I easily crushed the monster's head and defeated it. Since I defeated the named monster named Stalker, I also got 10 points. The quality of this dungeon was higher than expected. If named monsters are this strong, I look forward to fighting boss monsters. When I was feeling happy, three people came up to me and said that I stole something they were after because I killed the named monster they wanted to kill. Because I looked fearless, they asked if I didn't know who they were. They later introduced themselves as the famous three brothers, Black Trinity. Black Trinity consists of three brothers named Kim Yongjin, Kim Yongchul, and Kim Yongsu. Seeing their behavior, it seems they want to challenge me. I think they came from the origin of the sound of fighting that I heard earlier. They seem to target participants when they are weak. I also decided to use Eyes of Truth on them. After looking at their status windows, they were much stronger than me from a physical stats point of view. Their potential is also not bad. Seeing this, I laughed too. Seeing me laughing to myself, they were confused. I then said I don't care about Black Trinity, three ridiculous brothers or whatever, enough talking and challenged them to come forward. The three brothers who heard my challenge felt angry. The annoyed Kim Yong-jin and Kim yong Su told their eldest brother that they would shut me up and teach me a lesson. They also lunged with their weapons and shouted at me to die. As they charged, I dashed between them and changed Dark Star's form from spear to knife and attacked Kim Yong-jin. When I attacked Kim Yong-jin, Kim yong Su attacked me from behind, but I dodged his sword attack. I thought that the teamwork of the three of them was good, but they chose the wrong opponent. I also used the burning dagger the beauties of nature technique and attacked Kim yong Su. Kim yong Su, who was hit by my attack, screamed in pain. Burning Dagger The beauties of nature is a self-defense martial art created by dancing women from the sect of beggars who are specialized in killing opponents using a little force and parry attacks. Kim yong Su, who was overwhelmed by my knife attack, could only endure and shouted at me to stay away from him. Kim yong Chul, who saw this incident, thought it would be difficult for Kim yong Jin to use magic when I moved that close. Feeling fed up, Kim yong Chul threw his spear and told me to stay away from their youngest brother. Realizing the attack thrown by Kim yong Chul, I jumped to dodge. Seeing me jump to avoid it, Kim yong Chul laughed and said that it was over for me. With his magic, Kim yong Chul threw a fireball at me. But in the face of that fireball that came to attack me, I smiled and sliced through the magic with the five tiger slashing technique. This technique is the epitome of the martial arts of the Habukpung family, who are renowned for their military nature and use of their sword techniques in combat. This was a powerful and powerful sword technique that was used in real combat. The three brothers who witnessed this could only remain silent in confusion because they did not understand what had just happened. I then used the spear that Kim Yong Chul threw as a foothold and jumped towards Kim Yong Jin. In front of Kim Yong Chul, who was shocked, I said that this is the end for him. I also slashed Kim Yong Chul's chest. After defeating Kim Yong Chul, a message popped up saying that I got 25 points from contestant Kim Yong Chul. I have now finally accumulated 45 points. That person had saved a lot of points. Seeing that their eldest brother was defeated, they believed that my weapon was being infused with aura and thought that they were in danger. Judging from their abilities, I'm thinking there's no way they'd store all the points in one person. With my sinister smile, I invite them to finish the business they have started. I wonder how much they will give me. Seeing me approaching with a smile that looked like a demon, Kim Yong Jin and Kim Yong Su started to sweat profusely. In the guild broadcast room, the bystanders were shocked to hear of Kim Young Chul being eliminated from the exam. They didn't expect that one of the brothers from Black Trinity would be eliminated, since they were rookies who were well cared for by the number two guild in this country. 
They were also curious about who had defeated Black Trinity and asked to turn on the monitor that was watching Black Trinity. One female viewer said that it looked like Yu Shengwu had done something. As he had heard from his guild master, Yu Shengwu was a newbie who was found by the nation's rank two hunter, Li Wantek, and trained directly by him. Because of that, the woman felt certain that the three rookies from the Gumsan Guild were no match in front of Yu Shengwu. In front of the audience from the Gumsan Guild, the lady from the Huarang Guild said that it looked like their guild would win this exam. When the monitor is on, the screen shows Black Trinity being defeated by one man. The lady from the Huarang Guild still thought that the one who defeated Black Trinity was Yu Shengwu and praised him. But when he saw the monitor screen, he was surprised, because he didn't recognize the man who defeated the Black Trinity at all. After defeating two other participants, I finally beat 20 participants and collected 172 points. I've been circling the boss monster area looking for the so-called rank one, but I haven't met him at all. Looking at the time on my watch, there wasn't much time left. Since this exam is more important, I decided to clear this exam first and meet the boss monster. There was only one path that connected to the interior of the Rock Mountain, the location of that boss monster, and the road was narrow enough that only two people could pass, and at the other end of the lane was a golem guarding it. Looking at the golem's status window, his tenacity stat count was quite high. Plus, he has indomitable and regeneration traits. I wonder if the examiner really expects the entrant to defeat this monster. Taking one hit from that golem alone would have marked the end for me. Because of that, I can't give it time to regenerate and accumulate damage by attacking it nonstop. I dashed towards the golem and attacked its leg with the spear-shaped dark star. Since my attacks were too shallow, the golem announced and counterattacked with its fists. When the golem's fist landed, nothing hit it. I, who had dodged the golem's attack, said that it was very kind of the golem to notify its movements. I thought it had been a while since I'd been in a fun situation since three ridiculous brothers attacked me, but this made it all the more interesting. It would be too much of a burden if I used the five tiger slaying blade technique once more. Because of that, the next attack would be perfect for me. I changed the form of Dark Star to a large axe and used the Great Mountain Axe technique to strike the golem's shoulder. The Great Mountain Axe technique was a martial art that boasted extraordinary strength by strengthening the axe's characteristic of cutting and destroying. Since my attack was effective, the golem tried to counterattack. The size of the crack I make doesn't matter. If one attack is still not enough, I just hit dozens or hundreds of times to defeat him. With the Great Mountain Axe technique, I attacked the golem repeatedly on various parts of its body. While I was in the middle of a battle, Shin Yumi suddenly noticed that there was another visitor before her. Seeing Shin Yumi who arrived, I also felt a little panic because she came when I almost killed this boss monster. Seeing me off guard, the golem tried to attack me but I dodged it easily. In this situation, I feel like I'm in a bit of trouble. If Shin Yumi were to attack me with her spirit magic now, it would be impossible for me to fight her at the same time as the boss monster. But I also can't deal with Shin Yumi just yet, or else this golem will regenerate. When I was confused about what I should do, Shin Yumi called me and asked if I needed help from her. I can't believe what he just said. What kind of tribulation did he think I've gone through for trash so far? With my irritated face, I asked what he meant that he wanted to get a contribution in something I'd almost finished. Shin Yumi, who heard that, laughed and said that I didn't look like I could beat him alone. Hearing that, I thought so. That's what he thought. If I play my cards right, I can control the situation as I see fit. I also asked Shin Yumi to bet with me. Ten minutes from now, I will defeat the Blue Guardian within that time. Shin Yumi, who heard my statement, felt that there was no way I could beat her. After all, he also had no reason to do that and asked what he would get if he won the bet. I also showed the points I had accumulated and said that I would give all my points. Seeing the amount of my points, Shin Yumi was surprised. I have more points than this boss monster. This should be an attractive offer because it is more profitable than splitting boss monster points. Having heard what the reward would be if she won, Shin Yumi asked what I would get if I won. Hearing that, 
I myself wasn't sure what I wanted because I spontaneously asked him to bet. But hearing that the golem started regenerating because my attacks stopped, I frantically asked him to treat me to a meal. The confused Shin Yumi asked again to confirm it, but I asked her to stop talking to me. Shin Yumi finally agreed with my bet, but she said that she would immediately intervene when I looked like I was about to lose. I confidently replied that he could do whatever he wanted because that wasn't going to happen. Hearing me speak so casually, Shin Yumi asked why I spoke like this, even though this was our first meeting. While swinging my big axe, I replied that if he doesn't like it, just talk the same way. Time continued to pass, and the exam finally ended. All participants finally returned from the test location. Inspectors immediately checked on the examinees and treated those who were injured or in poor condition. I, who was sitting on the ground, thought that this exam was tiring and quite difficult. Since the Blue Guardian managed to recover some of the injured parts, I almost lost the bet. The other participants saw that I was clean enough. They believed that I was hiding and believed that I would be eliminated. Shin Yumi really couldn't believe that the man who had made the bet with her could read all of the Guardian's attacks and attack with perfect timing without the slightest mistake. Shin Yumi wonders if she fights him. Can he win? Shin Yumi, who had fought Yu Sheng Wu, felt that he was fast and strong, but that was about it. He was confident that he could win again against her if such a situation repeated itself. The person Shin Yumi was talking about, Yu Xiong Wu, was currently shocked. Because the announcement that announced the first place was not him, but a person named John Minchul. Yu Xiong Wu muttered that he couldn't accept this. The reporters tried to interview Yu Xiong Wu, but he rejected them harshly. Yu Sheng Wu's guards blocked the reporters and the exam staff announced that the interview could not be conducted for the stability of the participants. Therefore, the details will be announced through a press conference later. The other participants who saw me couldn't believe I got first place. I thought I'd better get going before everyone notices me. When I tried to leave this room, the front door was blocked by people trying to recruit me into their guild. And when I tried to find another door, the reporters had surrounded me from behind. In this situation, I think I can't go home. Having no other choice, I announced to them there were conditions before I joined the guild. I said that I would join a guild which would give me a down payment of five million dollars. Everyone looked doubtful. They say I have great fighting abilities, but my stats are low. It's a different story if my potential status is A rank, but there's no reason for a hunter without the possibility of developing in the future. It's a shame because I also don't intend to join any guilds. Of course, no one accepts newbies who come out of nowhere asking for $5 million. But while I was thinking like that, someone said that he would pay the deposit. I didn't expect any guild to be willing to spend $5 million recruiting rookies. I wonder which madman did that. As I searched for the lunatic who was trying to recruit me, within the crowd was someone who waved his hand. But when I saw the person waving, I and the others were shocked, because the one waving his hand was the dwarf who was the branch manager of the Interstellar Alliance. I am currently in Martin's room and asked him what he is planning. I then made sure he knew that I didn't join a guild at all. Martin, who heard my statement, said that he knows that and he just wants to provide comfort to their customers. When I didn't understand what he meant, Martin explained his intention to register me as a free mercenary of the Interstellar Alliance. Contractually, I'll be affiliated with them, but I'm also an equal. Mercenaries they wouldn't give any restraints to. Apart from that, they would secure the gate, provide a special support team, give tax advantages, buy whatever I got from inside the dungeon at high prices, and so on. About this contract, I think that it's fine. But the terms were too favorable. In front of Martin, I said that I didn't know the Interstellar Alliance was generous. No goodwill without a price was the rule of the Alliance. There's no way I could believe they're being kind for no reason. I felt like I was wasting my time, but when I was about to refuse, Martin said that all they wanted was my trust. Hearing the answer made me think. He must think there is a giant faction behind my VIP code. It's a shame because I've already shown everything I've got. If that's the goal, he spoils me for free. There is no reason to refuse it. That's why I agreed to sign their contract. Martin's secretary asks Martin if it's okay to make a free mercenary contract with Jean Minchul. Martin replies that he doesn't move without thinking about it. 
he also asked. He also asked his secretary to come back and accompany Jean Minchul. The Alliance's free mercenaries were strong enough to match Pandemonium's nobles. Therefore, free mercenary contracts require the approval of a key figure with a leadership position and above within the Alliance. It was possible that the VIP code wasn't the only reason for the approval, but Martin felt he couldn't pass up the opportunity. He had prepared various scenarios, and now was the time to carry them out with the leadership. The leader that Martin contacted via an item also agreed to a free mercenary contract. Martin couldn't believe that his leader would agree so easily. The leader then ordered Martin to give full support to the VIP customer and report to him if something happened. He also ordered her to keep this a secret from outsiders. When he was about to give another order, the leader, who was aware of Martin's state that was lying on the ground, asked if something was wrong. But Martin replied that there was nothing wrong at all. Martin really did not understand. The leader initially seemed indifferent when he told him that this person was a VIP, but his reaction immediately changed when he saw the video of the fight. One of the twelve leaders of the Interstellar Alliance, Nox the Dragonkin, was impressed when he saw his VIP customer's battle video. The movement is perfect and no energy is wasted. He felt like he saw the demon King Deimos, but that was impossible since he was already dead. When I heard a knock on the door, I woke up. I wonder what time it is, but for some reason my phone also turns off. When I asked who was knocking on the door, from behind the door came a voice that introduced herself as Ellie from the Interstellar Alliance. After turning on the cell phone and charging it, I opened the door for him and asked what business an important person had coming to my house. He should have told me first. If I'm not mistaken, this woman in front of me is the dwarf's secretary. Ellie replied that she thought it would be better to speak directly. He sent me a message, but I didn't answer. Realizing what he meant, I also apologized for not being able to check it and showed him the current state of my cell phone. Ellie, who saw the current state of my cell phone, said that she understood and didn't blame me. I can't even read it because my phone keeps ringing. I asked how they got my contacts. I then advised Ellie to come in if the business was going to take some time. Ellie accepted my offer and entered. After seeing my room, Ellie said that this place is too simple for a VIP. I'm sure they've checked my background, but Ellie replies that they haven't done anything because it might make me less happy. If that's the case, I'm asking how they came yesterday. Ellie answered because I showed my Awakener license when I entered the Alliance building, so they guessed that I would be having an exam soon. I was impressed too. They made sure not to cross the line with me. This is very good for me because they are good at reading the situation. Not wanting to mince words, Ellie also gave me a card and various other things. When I asked what it was, Ellie replied that this was a work cell phone, a card with contract fees and a savings book. Hearing Ellie mention the contract fee, I wonder how much they give. When I saw the amount of money, I was surprised because they have given $4.7 million. Ellie explained that they couldn't make it $5 million due to taxes. I didn't expect that they would actually give all of this away. Ellie, who heard what I said, laughed and said that she didn't expect that I would be so surprised. Hearing Ellie's words, as she said, I do live a simple life. It's because of my ability in finance that I'm still in the same class as an ordinary student Jean Minchul. After giving away the items earlier, Ellie said that there was another reason for her coming early like this. He came to form my support team and wanted to hear my preferred gate criteria. Hearing Ellie's other business, I said that I just needed a support team to collect the corpses. Ellie, who was shocked, asked if I didn't need a hunter tank, damage dealer, or support but I said that I alone was enough. Ellie understood and said that she would form a team of carcasses carriers and surgeons. Out of curiosity, I asked when I could start raiding. Ellie replied as soon as my team was formed because they had secured the gate. Hearing that, I guess it will take a bit of time. My body was itching because I wanted to feel the benefits of being a hunter. I didn't get a chance to use my level up trait after getting it. Seeing that I was slightly disappointed, Ellie said that it wouldn't take long, because he can be counted on. Three hours later, I was very impressed. Just because she can be relied on, Ellie can set up a gate quickly. With confidence, Ellie said that she had said that she could be relied on. 
With his work efficiency, it's no wonder he's so confident. While we were talking, someone came up to us and asked if I was the rookie that caused such a stir during the last license exam. Noticing people coming, Ellie introduced them as a support team that would help me. The leader of the support team came and introduced himself as Jong Yong Yun and asked me to shake hands. I took his hand to shake his hand and introduced myself. I then explained that only I would be hunting inside the gate. When I was done, they would be gathering resources. Seeing the new hunters who entered, Zhang Yongyun thought that he had come because of the request of division head Ellie. Previously, when Zhang Yongyun didn't know who John Minchul was, he was curious about which big person had made them gather here in such a hurry. Zhang Yongyun was sure he had never heard of that name before. His subordinates who heard Zhang Yongyun's words said that that person was the one who ranked first in the last license exam. Zhang Yongyun is impressed that his subordinates know things that he doesn't. His subordinates laughed and said that it was yesterday's exam. Of course he didn't know about it. After a while, they realized that a novice with no experience was doing the raid alone. They were sure that the rookie would call another team after hunting for a bit because they weren't strong enough. Some even resent that he wants to take a day off, and he doesn't want to risk his life for this. At this time, the support team that witnessed me kill the thorned bull were shocked as well. They were shocked that I killed a thorned bull, one of the wildest and most powerful D-level monsters in one strike. While they were in shock, I warned them that we're going to get a little busy. That's why I want them to make sure to stay strong. Seeing my experience continuously increasing, I got even more excited. When I get enough XP, a message appears saying that I have leveled up. The message asked me to open the status window and increase my stats. My level has finally risen. Excited, I asked the support team to rest here for a bit. The support team was relieved to finally be able to rest. They didn't expect that novice hunters would actually raid alone. The leader of the support team who saw his subordinates slacking off scolded him. After checking the status window, I realized that I had five points remaining. I read an explanation that every time a player levels up, they gain five stats. You can use points to increase the stats you want. The stats I will raise have already been decided. I will put all points into chaos power. Seeing the increased chaos energy, I thought that this was really crazy. Knowing chaos energy increases 10% in 30 minutes of hunting. Looks like getting stronger won't take that long for me. Just thinking about it makes me so excited. The wisdom monkeys that were trying to kill me threw fireball magic at me from the top of the tree. But I easily killed a crowd of wisdom monkeys who only looked like bags of XP to me. The panicked wisdom monkeys could only run away and ask for help from anyone. Zhang Yongyun, who witnessed this, he thought that the rookie hunter was really a battle-crazed devil. People said that he was a brat with no fighting experience. That's just plain bullshit. That fighting style was more like one of the near-perfect of many battles. Zhang Yongyun thought that he seemed to be tasked with helping a very extraordinary child. He found it hard to believe that what he witnessed right now was the skill of the new hunter. Zhang Yongyun can't wait to see how far he can fly. Seeing the last wisdom monkey trying to run away, I chased and killed it with my spear. I finally got to level 5, and my stats got even stronger. After eliminating the window monkeys, I thought this raid only had boss monsters left. Since I decided to try raiding boss monsters, I asked if it would be fine for them. Although a bit hesitant, Zhang Yongyun agreed that they would do according to my plan. His subordinates who didn't understand asked why his team leader looked a little doubtful. Zhang Yongyun felt that he didn't know very well since he was still a beginner, but usually, People only headed for boss monsters after exploring two to three days inside the gate. Due to the lack of information, it was impossible for people to risk their lives. The support team seems to waste time on such worries. If that's the reason, I said that I will defeat him now. In order to raid a gate, one must destroy the core to complete it. If you follow the energy flowing out from the core, then you can find the boss. I also arrived at the location of the boss monster. In that place there is Ete Monkey, the leader of the Window Monkey who is currently being served by the Widom Monkeys. Since he's the leader of the Wisdom Monkey, I wonder if his main magic and skills are strengthened by magic. 
Zhang Yongyun warned me that the Ete monkey is an extraordinary foe, but I ignored his warning and told him not to worry. I ran towards the boss monster. The boss monster that noticed my presence frantically used its skills. In front of me also appeared a totem. A message popped up saying that I had entered Totem of Paralysis, LV. One, range. Because of that, my agility decreased by three. This skill is quite troublesome. I also used the flower dagger technique throw and split the totem into two. Eat Monkey and the Wisdom Monkeys who witnessed it were scared and panicked. I thought that these monkeys were really stupid. Their defeat was already decided as they chose to fight head-on despite their weakness. I easily killed the Wisdom Monkeys. Seeing that all of his men were dead, Eight Monkey went berserk and was very angry. Zhang Yang Yun watching that didn't expect that this boss monster was possessed by two spirits. This boss is clearly stronger than the usual Ite monkey. Zhang Yang Yun's subordinates were convinced that this boss monster wasn't something that could be fought solo and thought that they needed to help now. In the face of the Eat monkey who was charging at me, I changed Dark Star to its katana form and used the five tiger splitting blade technique. With my technique, I split the Ite monkey in two. I don't understand what the support team is talking about. Why would they want to help me defeat this weak monster? The support team who witnessed that were only shocked and lost for words. Gate raid has finally ended. When I came out of the gate, Ellie praised my good job and gave me a towel and a drink. I didn't expect that he was still waiting. Ellie also said of course she had to wait because this was my first raid. I thought that I wanted to immediately go to the next gate and ask Ellie when the next raid was. He replied that the next raid would be carried out in three days. I'm thankful that it's not tomorrow. There's another schedule on my agenda tomorrow. But I'm asking to help me organize one raid a day starting the day after tomorrow. Ellie asks if I'm okay with that, since people usually put three to four days between raids because of how tiring it is. I replied, I have no problem with that. Ellie agreed with my request. Before me too, I also asked Ellie to introduce me to the equipment maker expert. I feel like I should at least wear armor. When I was still Dimos, I was covered with enhanced demonic protection energy, so I didn't really care about meaningless attacks. I might be in trouble later if I proceed without equipping. Hearing my request, Ellie said that she has a master belonging to the union that she can communicate with me directly. Ellie will contact him once he has arranged the meeting. He also said that it wouldn't take long. Hearing that I can only look forward to it. After exiting the building, the two golems guarding the building thanked me and said that I could come back any time. I feel empty for spending 400 million won on equipment alone. I didn't expect the expert he was going to introduce me to would be that dwarf, Martin. For some reason, I can't seem to trust the dwarf. I'm satisfied with what he's shown so far, but this is a different matter. But since he convinced me, I don't think there would be a problem believing him. While on the bus ride home, I thought that I should train my mind as soon as I got home. But suddenly this bus was shaken. Looks like there's been an accident. I wonder if this bus just hit someone. But the people on the streets were surprised because a gate suddenly appeared in the middle of Seoul. People on the street are panicking now because a gate suddenly opens in the middle of the road. I was surprised to see a gate that could open in the middle of Seoul. And again, the gate is black. What I saw yesterday was blue. From the gate came out a werewolf. The civilians began to flee in panic. One by one, the werewolves started to leave. The civilians were wondering when the Hunter Association would be dispatched. Amidst the civilians running around, a little girl was crying because she had lost her mother. In front of the crying little girl appeared werewolves who tried to kill and eat her. I lifted the little girl and stabbed the werewolf with Darkstar's spear. In the face of that Dark Star's corpse, I said that using martial arts on monsters seemed to be a waste. Therefore, die and increase my stats. After defeating the werewolf, I also get 2.5% XP. Dark Star's level is so low that I don't get much XP. But suddenly a message said that I can absorb the chaos energy that Dark Star has. That message really intrigued me. Because there were too many Dark Stars, even the rank D hunters here found it difficult. Mana and the durability of their weapons are running low. Because the color of the gate was different from the E-rank kobold which had a blue gate color, they thought that these monsters weren't ordinary monsters. 
They thought that they would die by Dark Star aiming his crossbow at them. But suddenly I jumped and attacked that Dark Star and screamed that he was my prey. I then killed all the Dark Stars that kept coming out of the gate. The hunters who watched looked very surprised and asked who I really was. To the hunters, I told them to go and help to evacuate the civilians while I stopped them. After the hunters left, I excitedly jumped into the crowd of Dark Stars and shouted that they were my XP. At a cafe, a man in a suit came to give his company card and introduced himself as Jong Seong Hee. He then said that he had heard that I had handled the gate break that happened in the middle of the city without any warning. Because of that, there will be irreparable damage if no one can deal with it soon. He then said thanks to my actions, they were able to keep the damage to a minimum. As the representative of the Hunter Association, Zhang Xiong He bowed his head and thanked me. Not really sure what to say, I said that it was just something I had to do. Zhang Xiong He said that the Hunter Association had rewarded him for handling the gate break. He explained that there would be prize money as well as loot from the monsters I defeated. Zhang Xiong He turns out to be a hunter from the Hunter Association's security team, from which I sensed he might be a B or A rank. I felt that I didn't need to use the Eye of Truth. I doubted that I would ever see him again, and I had no interest in this person at all. I intend to have Ellie handle everything since it looks like it will take some time. That's what I thought. But one week later, Zhang Xiong He appeared in front of me again. I never thought that we would face off like this. I didn't expect to meet this person here. An A rank hunter, Zhang Xiong He. If you ask why this situation happened, this story happened two days ago. When I fought the two headed werewolf, I sliced off its head easily and got to level 11. After the stool gate incident ended, a week had passed. Thanks to attacking the gate every day, I was able to raise my level to 11. However, it was slowly getting harder and harder to level up and stat. I need to quickly get equipment and go to a higher ranked dungeon. When he saw me practicing, Zhang Yong Yun did I practice again without rest. I replied that such a time was the right time to practice. But the support team who heard it thought differently. They are very much resting at the moment. The gate hunt is finally over. When I left the gate, Ellie was waiting for me outside. Ellie, who heard what I said, said that her job was to help me. I also said that he shouldn't have time to wait for me if he works in the Interstellar Alliance. But he asked me to think about this as his branch really cares about me. Even though he was the dwarf's direct subordinate, I felt that the two of them treated me in a completely different way. Ellie then also said that the Martin branch manager wanted to meet me because he said that the equipment I ordered was ready. Hearing that, I said that I should apparently take a break from attacking the gate tomorrow. This made me think that I wasn't sure how long it would take me to check the equipment. While I was thinking, the support team who heard our conversation burst into cheers. They were very happy because they could finally rest. They feel like they haven't had a day off in a very long time. Seeing their reaction, I was confused. Ellie and Zhang Yong Yun, who laughed at that, said that they had done two or three times what they usually do. He kept silent because they made a lot of money, but it seemed like it was quite difficult for them. They say that rest is very important for all jobs. Hearing them, I also said that I'm sorry because I'm not normal. I wonder why the two of them are so compact. Because today's work was finished, Ellie said goodbye and said that she would pick me up tomorrow. The next day, I arrived at the Interstellar Alliance's branch. But when I arrived, many reporters came to interview me. They then bombarded me with questions. Since I didn't want to have anything to do with this troublesome thing, I ran away and left this matter to Ellie. Ellie, who was left behind, could only feel annoyed in her heart. While inside the building, I thought that I was about to get involved in something troublesome. Seeing that I had arrived, the receptionist of this branch shouted and announced that I had arrived. Because of that, Martin ran up to me excitedly. He then led me and said that he had confirmed that everything was prepared. Hearing that made me impatient to check it out ASAP. Martin says he is sure that I will be satisfied with this. Martin then pressed a button on the remote and a curtain opened. Once the curtain was opened, one could see various kinds of good quality equipment on display. At first I didn't really trust this dwarf, but this is really extraordinary. After using all the equipment, Martin asked me if I liked his product. 
I replied that they were absolutely perfect, exceeding my expectations. Martin said it was a real shame because if he had the time and budget, he could make better equipment. But since there's nothing in the contract about helping me with equipment, I feel that this is far from enough since I want to maintain a positive relationship transaction with the Interstellar Alliance. I changed the subject and wanted to talk about something. Martin was acting cute with his old face and asked if there was anything else I needed. Seeing him acting cute made me feel very uncomfortable. I then asked Martin to prepare me to enter the B-rank gate. But Martin, who heard my request, was very surprised. He says that is not possible for now. Martin explained that not only was the difficulty very different starting from the B-rank gate, but the standard of loot was also different. Because of that, there was a lot of competition. That's why starting from the gate rank B and above has a minimum requirement set by the Hunter Association. And the requirement to enter a rank B gate is to attack more than 40 rank D gates or more than 30 rank C gates. Hearing that made me think that even if I attacked the gate every day, it would take more than two months for me to enter a rank B gate. That was too long for me. Martin then said there was a second method. But this method was not widely used, and that was obtaining permission by fighting A-rank hunters from the Hunter Association. Hearing that made me excited too. I didn't expect that there was such a good method. The Hunter Association is one of the few international organizations with powers comparable to the United Nations. And at this time, Ellie and I were in the association's building. While walking with Ellie, I asked her if she was mad that I put her in front of reporters and ran away. With a calm face, Ellie said that she never held grudges when people left her alone and then ran off alone. I felt a little guilty hearing his sarcastic tone, but Ellie said he was just kidding. He also asked if I would be okay. Because no matter how fast I get strong, I'll be fighting an A-rank hunter. I answered that since I don't, I'm not risking my life, so it's fine. And it's not that I'm arrogant, but with chaos energy, equipment, and past experience, it's hard just looking at my specs. I'm sure that I can handle it if I enter this test using my equipment and experience. While waiting in the A1 waiting room, a staff explained that losing this certification test would be decided by holding a duel with one of the A-rank hunters from the Hunter Association. Out of curiosity, I asked if I would pass if I defeated my opponent. Hearing my question, the staff said it was a funny joke. He explained that it was the examiner who would determine whether I would pass or not. I then asked how the match would be scored, but the staff refused to tell me because it was confidential. To satisfy my curiosity, Ellie whispered that they would be judging by basic skills, reaction speed, and ability to make decisions when in danger. I finally understand. After the preparations were complete, the staff asked me to enter. Seeing the contents of this exam room, I'm sure that this exam room is arranged like a gate. Then, in the room appeared someone who said that he had been waiting for me. Seeing the figure waiting here, I was taken aback. Zhang Xiong-hee appeared, and once again introduced himself as Zhang Xiong-hee, an A-rank hunter affiliated with the Hunter Association security team. It is he who has been appointed as the examiner for this certification exam. He said if I did as I did, he was sure that I would be able to pass the exam without any problem. He then drew his sword and asked if I was ready. I took out Dark Star and changed its shape into a spear. Because I was ready, Zhang Xiong-hee also announced that the hunter certification exam would start. As soon as the exam started, I threw my spear. Zhang Xiong-hee parried it and returned a sword. At this rate, I say it's easy enough and parry the sword. Zhang Xiong-hee then lunged and made repeated attacks with his two swords. Seeing Zhang Xiong-hee attack made me realize something. When Ellie watched the match, she didn't expect John Minchul to have this high ability. Ellie felt confident that John Minchul would pass this test easily. After their clash of swords was over, Zhang Xiong-hee said that as expected, I really am amazing. Now he understands how I can overcome the gate break alone. He clapped his hands and said that only with this will I graduate. But before Zhang Xiong-hee could finish his sentence, I told him to come forward with everything he's got. Zhang Xiong-hee couldn't believe what he was hearing. I then said that I would kill him if he didn't do that. Zhang Xiong-hee, who was sweating slightly, said that I misunderstood. He didn't understand why I was mad when he told me I passed. 
I also said that I was sure there was no way I could fend off his attacks so easily unless he looked down on me. Zhang Xiangyi also looked surprised. There was a four-fold stat difference between me and him. It was impossible for me to parry his attacks, let alone counter his attacks. I'm not afraid of losing at all, but I really hate being looked down upon. For the last time, I told him to show all his abilities. Zhang Xiangyi finally understood. He believed that I seemed unstoppable with words at this point. He then displayed his ability to control seven swords freely. I got excited and said that he should have done this from the start. A rank hunter is like a high wall to me. That's why there's more value to challenging him. I also hit him with my spear, but Zhang Xiangyi parried it using one of his swords. My attack bounced back. Using that chance, Zhang Xiangyi appeared behind me and slashed at me with both of his swords. I ducked down to avoid his attack. After dodging, I changed my weapon to a short sword and attacked him. Just when I thought I saw an opening, but it turned out to be a trap since he had his fourth sword protecting him. The fact that the small sword could withstand that much force was testimony to how strong Zhang Xiangyi's abilities were. But I wonder why Tia limited her skills to only swords. Me and Zhang Xiangyi kept on exchanging attacks. Zhang Xiangyi said that he kept surprising her. I also said that this was not the time for him to be surprised. Zhang Xiangyi's attack was so fast that I barely dodged it. If we keep trading attacks like this, I won't be able to defend myself. I also used my ability and attacked him. Finally, Zhang Xiangyi used three swords to fend it off. He finally showed his full potential. I feel that there isn't much difference between our attack power. I need to wait for an opportunity to strike back. While I was clashing swords with him, Zhang Xiangyi said that I shouldn't let my guard down. I immediately noticed another sword flying to attack me. I was sure that I couldn't dodge this attack. Due to Zhang Xiangyi's attack, I was thrown against the exam room wall and shattered the wall. Zhang Xiangyi wondered if this was finally the end, but he was surprised to see me standing up again. He was sure that the impact of the strike just now was enough to shatter an arm. Zhang Xiangyi, who was shocked, asked how I was fine after receiving that attack. He suspected that I deliberately loaded the explosion to escape. That attack really hurt. Using explosions to escape is really pinya. But I have to lose body parts if I don't have defensive skills in my armor. With my armor, I can consume mana to strengthen the physical defense of the armor. Everything is working according to my plan, but it's harder than I thought. Now that I've experienced the stat difference myself, I won't be able to get through like this. Because of that, I need stronger martial arts. I also concentrated and studied the Seven Star Demon Sword. With this martial art, even my sword was enveloped in aura. Zhang Xiangyi, who witnessed this, also said that this didn't look good. He then apologized because this was the only sword he was carrying, so he couldn't release 100% of his power. I said that it's fine because that's enough. Zhang Xiangyi started lunging at me. I also started to use the Seven Star Demon Sword First Technique, Sun Destroying Slash. The shocked Zhang Xiangyi tried to parry, but it was useless. The sword he used to parry shattered. Seeing that, I smiled and let go of the second slash. Zhang Xiangyi was desperately holding back the slash and broke his two swords. Now he only has the last two swords and is very exhausted. That attack was too shallow to be a decisive attack. Since I still had Chaos Key remaining, I tried to execute a third slash, but I suddenly vomited blood. Me and Zhang Xiangyi knelt on the ground. Ellie and the Hunter Association staff who were worried came into the exam room and asked if we were okay. At the same time, I said that this is my victory, and Zhang Xiangyi said that if he brings seven swords, then he will win. A moment later, we were laughing out loud. Ellie and the Hunter Association staff didn't understand what was going on. I also asked how my test results. Of course, Zhang Xiangyi answered that I passed the test. Three days have passed since I passed the test. I'm currently practicing my own martial arts. Mine's wounds are also almost healed. Now I can finally enter the rank B gate. I also came to the gate at Kyonho Station. Ellie, who was worried, asked if I would be okay. He already said that I should be treated, but I still come back. Moreover, the gate that I'm going to attack today is a B rank gate. I also replied that I told him beforehand that it would be more helpful for me if I wasn't taken care of. The Cosmic Genesis art has a body modification effect. So that means my body is getting stronger from the process of being injured and healed. 
Although it's a shame that I have to take a break from attacking the gate, but my body has improved, and this makes me want to fight immediately. Upon arriving at the gate, the support team complained that this place was much colder than other places. Zhang Yonghyun, who saw that I was fine, asked if I wasn't cold. I replied that the wind was normal and quite fresh. Even though I said that, I actually dispelled the chill using Chaos Key. Since his coat bothered me a bit, I considered taking off my coat. Zhang Yonghyun, who heard that, asked not to do that because it would only make him feel colder. Out of curiosity, I asked them if they could help me. Zhang Yonghyun replied that they would get better if they made temporary camps. But if this kept up, their bodies would freeze and their work would slow down. Hence, while they were setting up camp, I said that I would take a look around the area. While walking around, I thought that this place is bigger than I expected. Just when I thought that I had come this far but still couldn't find any monsters, a yeti suddenly attacked from within the snow. I was just wondering why I can't see them with my naked eye. The yeti lunged and I dodged it. I didn't expect them to be able to camouflage when they were that big. The yeti then let out a slash with its claws. With my hands, I fend off it. I was a little nervous because I was about to enter a high-level gate, but I didn't feel anything special at all. It almost feels foolproof. With the five tiger slashing blade, I slashed the yeti's head. I also got 2.7% XP from the yeti. Based on the monsters from the rank D gate, I get 0.2% to 0.3% XP. But even though the difficulty level was almost the same, I got 10 times the XP. As I thought this is the right choice for attacking high-level gates, I have to thank the dwarf for this. At an office of the Hunter Association, an official asked Zhang Xiong-he what he had been doing. Zhang Xiong-he lowered his head and apologized. The higher-up then said that he had finally turned a reckless person like him into a person with responsibility. But he suddenly wanted to resign. It had been ten years since the two of them had worked together. Therefore, the higher-up asked Zhang Xiong-he to give him a reason why he was doing this to convince him. Zhang Xiong-he also replied that this was a long story. He told me that a few days ago, when he was certified, he met Hunter John Minchul. The official also asked to make sure that the John Minchul he meant was the person who overcame the gate break in the middle of the city. Zhang Xiong-he replied that it was true. John Minchul, his early awakening rank evaluations are all E rank, but he is a hunter who single-handedly overcomes gate breaks and saves people. Even though he overcame the gate break alone, Zhang Xiong-he believed that the ability between the two of them was immeasurable. But he was the one who was arrogant. Instead, he was the one who scolded me and reminded Zhang Xiong-he of the true meaning of being a hunter. Three days after the certification exam, Zhang Xiong-he as his senior apologized to Zhang Minchul for not showing him his bright side. Zhang Minchul also said that it was okay because he wasn't angry anymore. Their battle made Zhang Xiong-he learn a lot. Zhang Xiong-he believes that John Minchul will continue to grow stronger. He also told John Minchul that he would soon follow. John Minchul, who wasn't sure what he meant, just said, Work hard. Due to having unlocked his potential, it would be very difficult for Zhang Xiong-he to grow stronger through normal methods, but he thought that he could pass his limit if he used that method. Zhang Xiong-he also told his boss that he had to get stronger. That's why he wanted to go to the tower. His boss, who saw Zhang Xiong-he's eyes, thought that he must be crazy. The tower is a gigantic structure that appeared in Seoul along with the first major disaster. If one passed the tower's test, then they could surpass their limit, but they would have to put their life on the line. Zhang Xiong-he is a hunter who has reached the highest level. His boss thought that he didn't have to fight so hard. The boss finally decided to tear up Zhang Xiong-he's resignation letter and said that he would pretend he didn't see this. Because Zhang Xiong-he had worked hard for a long time, his boss gave him a long vacation. Because his boss refused, Zhang Xiong-he lowered his head and said that he would take the vacation and would come back to greet him again. His boss then said not to forget to bring some souvenirs. Although Zhang Xiong-he seemed to obey his boss, he was sure that Zhang Minchul was currently advancing relentlessly on the path of righteousness now. Because of that, Zhang Xiong-he decided not to say anything. The third day of raiding the B-rank gate finally arrived. There is still 40 hours, 30 minutes left until the break occurs. If I don't kill the boss monster, then the monsters will keep appearing inside the gate. 
As long as there weren't too many monsters, there wouldn't be a break, so this was the best hunting ground. After continuously killing yetis, I finally got to level 15. A moment later, a message popped up saying that this system is searching for traces of souls and awakening the power engraved within me. I then got authority of allurement and authority of hell. I was surprised to see it. The curious Zhang Yonghyun asked if something was wrong. I replied that it was nothing and said that I would rest for a bit. The authority of sin used to exist in an ancient castle known as the Temple of Sins deep in the Pandemonium Dimension, and there was a group of beings who reached Pandemonium who were known as the 72 Throne Aristocrats. The Temple of Sins gives authority to the devil sitting on the throne, a powerful force that reached the level of omnipotence broke away from a god, that is, the authority of sins. But that was in my previous life. Right now, I'm just a human and not a demon. I believe that I shouldn't have access to the authority of sin, and those two powers never belong to Daimos. In my previous life, I killed the previous owner of a rank 11 hellfire devil, Grangios, and the first rank 55 demon king of charm, Seraphin. So this means that my human body can gain abilities from those I killed in my previous life. This window wants me to select one of these two authorities. I don't even have to think about choosing. The authority for enchantment is completely useless to me. That's why I chose authority of hellfire. This way I will be able to obtain light and dark energy. A moment later, a message appeared saying that hell's fire had been changed to abyss spark. I was so confused because it makes me excited again. I can't wait to use my new skill right away. And coincidentally, there were three monsters stuck together at the moment. I also provoked the yetis and called them white-haired gorillas. The yetis who heard this were furious. I also thought that this was the time to try a new skill. Recently, the common sense that I know has been broken many times. I have been reincarnated in a human body, and I as a human can also obtain the devil's exclusive power, authority of sin. In the face of the charging yetis, I also used abyssal flames. I know what abyssal flames are, but I'm not sure about holy fire. When hit by my flames, the yeti could only scream in agony. Grangio's authority of hellfire, if the owner has enough mana, then it will become a hellfire that will burn his opponent forever. That's what I remember. But I'm really curious about holy fire. Just by looking at the name, it sounded like divine power. In the end, I decided to find out. The angry Yeti friends started to surround me from the front and back. I then use holy fire. I never thought that I, who was once a devil, would be able to wield holy power. Since holy power was a power used to repel evil beings, you wouldn't be able to use it as an attack. But those power things can be used as buffs on the user, which increases their physical abilities when used on themselves. Usually this power is considered as a support skill in battle. The performance might look good, but maybe because I was a devil in my previous life, I felt chills all over my body. But, if I think, think again. This is the power of the Archangel of Elysium, Michael. I also killed him in my previous life. I wonder if I got the powers of people I've killed before, regardless of their race. This is clearly too strong. Most martial arts focus on melee attacks so I thought that it would be even more difficult to attack the gate. But unexpectedly, I got a ranged attack and a boon. I've been hunting quite a bit, so I might as well start hunting boss monsters and closing this gate. The imp who was standing on the rock shouted for the humans to die and released his magic attack. With my abyssal flame, I also parried the imp's magic. These monsters are now targeting my support team. It's a good option, but it won't work as long as I'm here. All the monsters that got in our way were burned by my abyssal flame. After walking for quite a while, we finally arrived at the boss monster's room. I also told the support team that they can rest here. Zhang Yongyun, who was a little worried, asked if I was really thinking of defeating the boss monster of the gate rank B by myself. I replied that I had no intention of returning. Zhang Yongyun also said that I can't die, because their lives will also be in danger if I die. To my support team, I assure them that I will definitely come back. As I entered, there was a voice asking if I was alone. Seeing the Yeti tribal chief's boss monster, Nonan, I replied that he was also alone. Nonan laughed and used the call slave skill. After summoning several Yetis, Nonan ordered them to attack. 
I whistled and said that he would regret it if he just stood there. Because you suddenly disappeared, even the yetis were confused. I suddenly appeared from behind them and attacked using the great mountain axe technique to slit the throat of one of the yetis. Nonan looks impressed with that. One of the yetis then blew cold air to attack me, but I parried it with terror of hell. I kept on killing yetis using my axe technique. Nonan was finally angry and started to stand up. Seeing Nonan coming forward, I asked him if he felt like fighting now. Nonan then said that he would kill me himself. He jumped with his big body and tried to attack me. I, who had reached the back of his head, said that he was really stupid for lunging recklessly and attacking with my hellfire. Because her face was scorched by fire, Nonan became even more furious and used the ice blizzard magic, seeing that I thought it would be difficult for me to fend it off using terror of hell. Thus, turning Darkstar into a sword and parrying all of his blizzard attacks. After winning all those attacks, I recovered myself using heavenly flames and asked if that was all he had. Nonan was even more angry and lunged. In the face of the attacking Nonan, I used the Sword of Starfall skill and slashed him in half. In front of Nonan's corpse, which was divided in two, I said that I warned him that he would regret it.